a beloved lyricist, writer, lecturer, and TV personality, E.Y. Yip Harburg of New York City. E.Y. Yip Harburg started his notable and creative life in a cold water flat in New York City. As a youngster, he was a newsboy for the old New York Herald Tribune. Later, he was a writer on the same lamented paper. In 1932, he wrote something that everybody here knows about, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? <laughs> Despite all of this intellectual quality, Yip's first job at age seven was putting pickles into barrels in a pickle factory. <laughs> but since that time, all the world has been humming, dancing, and falling in love to lyrics for which he was responsible in April in Paris, and it's only a paper move. Generations have enjoyed his truly great Broadway shows, The Wizard of Oz, Cabin in the Sky, <laughs> Finian's Rainbow, <laughs> Bloomer Girl, and many more. Once a youthful lamplighter along New York City docks for $3 a week, he has since lighted up many a life by his genius in laughter and melody. A great American who abundantly deserves this, the most prestigious award in the United States, the Horatio Alger Award. Ladies and gentlemen, honored members, I'm deeply appreciative of this award. Uh, probably the, uh, without going into any details, the songs I wrote undoubtedly are my autobiography. There is no doubt that I was a devotee of at least 65 of Horatio Alger books when I first started to read. And uh, that led me somehow or other through the boom of the 20s into an electrical appliance business after I had graduated college with a Bachelor of Science degree that had nothing to do with electrical appliances. And the Horatio Alger syndrome was deep in my soul. Suddenly, by 1929, something happened to Horatio Alger and his dream. Regardless of my positive thinking, and it can be done, I was left walking along a bread line the same as millions of others. And I began to think about this system and about Mr. Horatio Alger. And I remembered something that Shakespeare, who was always prophetic about everything, said. There is more in heaven and earth, Horatio, than you can dream of in your philosophy. What is that something more? The men and women at this table who have succeeded 
by grit of going to, from rags to riches and have now reached the end of that dream, is that the end or is it the beginning? Where do we go from here? What is our dream? Is this the end? Is riches the end? Are the people who are sitting at this table, my colleagues who have worked hard and have generated this American dream, we find ourselves now with all our technical skill, our advanced advi wizardry in science and chemistry with milk diluted, air polluted, homes uprooted, boys recruited, taxes looted, mates ill-suited, sex disputed, <laughs> and our psyche is booted. So, this American dream that we have pursuing must have something more in heaven and earth than just the pursuit of riches. I am a songwriter. When the time came for bread lines, I wrote, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? The impact on the nation was terrific. That little song summed up the confusion, the bafflement, not only of then, 1929, but of now, of the little men, the people who have no money, the people who are on welfare, the people who are baffled that this dream is good for a few and not for the many. And so, in 1930, a man by the name of his initials, twinkling initials were FDR, was elected and he had a new conception. He said that individual enterprise is not enough. We are not individuals. We are all related. We all belong to a family of man. And this family of man belongs to a nation, and the nation belongs to a globe called the world. And. Uh, that this relationship is as important as the relationship of just the individual to himself, more important. And the result of our affluence has been that we have generated a group of young people who during the 60s created the new philosophy, the philosophy of meism. What am I getting out of this society? Me, me. How do I attain riches? We've got to stop thinking of me and thinking of us and you. And so, being a songwriter, I changed my philosophy of writing from Brother Can You Spare a Dime to somewhere over the rainbow. Because even though we were all down and out, that American dream that my immigrant parents came over for was still there. In spite of the fact that we had gone off the track, it was still there. 
And that what is behind the greatness of this country, that the ideal of that dream is symbolized in the rainbow, the rainbow that Noah spoke about when he had his covenant with God, that that rainbow is still there. But our dream is not accomplished. That rainbow still has to be reached. We've got to find out what we are going to do with the wealth and the affluence and the good luck and the gifts that God has given us. I hear the songs today and I am shocked by the deterioration and the degeneration of this great beautiful country. Where are the songs with the hope, the style, the skill, the upliftment of the Cole Porters and the Kearns and the Gershwins and that I tried to write? Where has the rainbow gone? That is the question today. Not to congratulate ourselves on the great successes we have done and made. Yes, great. What is the good of scientific advancement in nuclear energy when it is being used for genocide and for global destruction? What are the good of our Cadillacs and our automobiles and those other great inventions when they pollute the air? Are we using our wealth, our scientific advancements, properly? Have we a goal? Have we an ideal? We cannot congratulate ourselves yet on having achieved success, because our success now must be the beginning of a new and better world. We've got to find out what our values are. What are we going to do with all the success that we have accumulated? What are our moralities? I am not going to try to give answers because the beauty of life is to find answers, is to solve problems. We have solved the problems of how to succeed but we have not solved the problem of how to distribute that success properly. And this is the American dream from now on. The dream is, as Oscar Wilde said, not to find out, not to know the price of everything and the value of nothing. And so I leave you, not on a negative note, but that the same grit and guts that went into the Horatio Alger idea of from rags to riches must now go from riches to humanity, to beauty in life, to see to it that our songs are now uplifting and to make the American spirit work for us as our forefathers had planned, not for economics alone, but for this greater thing that is more, as Shakespeare said, in heaven and earth, Horatio, than your philosophy has dreamed of. Thank you.